Russia. From Reinhardt College in Waleska, Georgia, this is Renewing American Civilization. In this, the sixth of ten class presentations, Congressman Newt Gingrich, an adjunct professor at Reinhardt College, will continue his course, which presents the foundational principles necessary to the renewal of American civilization. This week's lesson, Pillar 5, Quality, focuses on quality, customer orientation, teamwork, continuous improvement, systems analysis, and the spirit of Edwards Deming. Let me uh, say good morning. I want to welcome the students of Mind Extension University who are taking the course uh, by television uh, around the country. And uh, remind you that you can mail your comments to Renewing American Civilization, Post Office Box 6008, Marietta, Georgia 30065. Or you can fax your comments to 404-528-9806. You could email your comments to America Online at renewam at aol period com. Uh, class transcripts and other class materials are available on our internet web page which is http uh, colon slash slash wwwpff period org and if you got that you probably didn't need it because you probably already knew it and if you didn't get it you probably don't need it because you probably can't do it uh, <laughs> for those who are the, for those who are not quite into the third wave you can call 1-800 to renew uh, to learn more about american civilization newspaper or how to get the video and audio tapes of the course and how to get the course readings i want to remind everyone that that, that we, this is premised on the idea that there is an american civilization and that the five pillars of American civilization are first, the historic lessons of American civilization, second, personal strength, third, entrepreneurial free enterprise, fourth, the spirit of invention and discovery, and fifth, today's topic, quality as defined by Edwards Deming. And that as we go through each of these pillars with two hours with a class devoted to them, we will then pick up starting next week with the four areas to which we will apply these pillars. First, the third wave in American civilization. Second, creating American jobs in the world market. Third, replacing the culture of violence and poverty with a culture of productivity and safety. And fourth, citizenship and community in 21st century America. Now, today's topic is quality as defined by Dr. Edwards Deming. But before we get into talking about quality, I just want to take 30 seconds and ask you, based on having read Drucker's The Effective Executive, which, uh, as you remember, is one of the books I most uh, emphasize buying and, and I'm frankly encouraging every American citizen to buy because I think it's a key to being effective in the 21st century. Um, how many of you have found yourself from Drucker's work uh, keeping better track of your time? Okay. Those of you who are doing that, how many of you found that it's actually helped you? Okay, almost all of you. I raise this because everybody who's watching, as well as the students in this class, uh, ought to consider, if you haven't already read Drucker and you're not applying these ideas, you ought to. And if you have read Drucker and you've now been told by about 90% of the people who are actually using it, that keeping track of your time and then thinking through how you use your time is actually effective may be the key then for a lot of people who say they're too busy to keep track of their time, is to keep track of their time so they can learn how, what they're too busy doing. And I think that's a very important part of this. Uh, the, uh, let me say that today also we are going to look at applying quality and profound knowledge to education. This is something I want you all during the class today to make notes to yourself. I mean, the one thing about virtually every American is they spend a lot of time as a student. You've been in education. And Dr. Minix was reminding me uh, last night that we, are, we want you to, to literally, for the next two hours, just take notes. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time at the very end of the class saying, okay, based on, on what you've learned from Deming and based on the concepts of quality and profound knowledge, how would you change the process of learning? But in addition, we're going to ask you by next week to tell us what, three, what are the three biggest changes you would make in the way people learn based on what you're learning today about knowledge. And all of you are, ex are experts. And all of you have been in school. All of you have spent the hours. You certainly have plenty of expertise at having studented and hopefully having learned. 
And so you ought to be in a position to say, based on my years of experience, here's what I think we ought to change based on what I've now heard about how Dr. Deming thought. Okay, so we're going to come back to that at the very end of the course. For me, uh, my introduction to uh, Edwards Deming started with uh, two people. One was Owens Robert, Owen Roberts, who's a management consultant who actually, and plan, long range planner, who actually was the person who helped invent this course. Uh, and many years ago, Owen Roberts told me that I had to study Dr. Deming, that he was right, and he gave me Dr. Deming's book, which is very hard to read. And the truth is, I didn't pay as much attention. I tried two or three times, I didn't get it, and I sort of backed off. Then, Roger Milliken invited me to come to the Milliken Company's annual leadership retreat. They take their top 270 people and they go off for three days and they hide and they talk about where are we at today, where are we going. There's no hierarchy. Now, Roger Milliken owns the Milliken Company. It's a family-owned company. He's been president of it since 1948. He's physically a big man, m taller than I am. Uh, and he dominates the company. And he has taken the company through a revolution beginning in 1979-1980 and, and literally changed the entire structure of the company. And I found myself in meetings where 37-year-old sales managers would get up and say, Mr. Milliken, with all due respect, you're just plain wrong. You do not understand what's happening in the marketplace, and we're in the marketplace, and we're telling you that isn't right. And I watched Milliken get up at one point, and he said, I know I'm supposed to just be part of a team here, but can I say something too? And it was astonishing, because there was a sincere partnering between the guy who literally owned the company and people who were working. This is the, the most successful textile company in the world. And so I stopped and I said, what is it you guys are doing? And, and they did the Red Bead experiment, which we'll do. And every year, as part of their retreat, they stop and they talk about Deming and they do the Red Bead experiment to remind themselves to ground their behavior in profound knowledge, which is Deming's term. But what I found at the Lincoln Company was that they had shared vision. They all had the same vision. They had shared strategies. They had open discussion. Facts, not opinions, dominated. Everyone studied the basics. Everyone counted. And they had an explosion of productivity. And when I say everyone counted and everybody studied the basics, I meant Mr. Milliken had to be studying the same material he asked everybody else to study. And when I say everybody counted, he wore a name tag, and everybody else wore a name tag, and he said, you can't know 13,000 people. But the newest janitor can wear a name tag, and the head of the company can wear a name tag, and there is an immediate ability to read each other's name. And you can create a dialogue that is more personal instantly. And so they had a system where they had thought through how everybody could play a major role. Now, from that, I decided, look, this is such an amazing change. And I listened to his key people tell us how they had changed the company. After I left there, uh, I had dinner with several of his top people. And I talked to him about, what did you do? How did you do it? And it literally was a revolution. They took a system which had been top down, and they redesigned the entire system. And it was very, very nerve-wracking. And uh, the guy who was in charge of doing it went off and ran this experiment, decided it worked, came in to see Mr. Milliken, outlined for Mr. Milliken and the top three deputies uh, this is the scale of the change we've got to go through. And the, 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 the senior guy said, that's not the Millican way. We don't do things like that. And he said, Roger Millican sat at the end of the couch for about five minutes, and there was nothing said. And he's thinking, OK, I can get a new job. It's not a bad deal. This has been a great experience. And at the end of it, Millican said, you know, he's right. That's not the Millican way, but it's going to be. And they just changed the whole system. It took them three years. 